But let's get back into the 60s when various means of transport competed in the struggle for speed. Yes, air cushion vessels were superior than ordinary ships in speed. But they also had a limit. While the speed increase potential of the wing in ground machines was not yet exhausted. That is why Rostislav Alexeyev's design bureau was doing quite well. Tests of experimental samples provided a lot of experience. Alexeyev's success was much preconditioned by the fact that he did a lot of tests on various models first. In his arsenal, you would find radio-controlled models, models towed by motorboats and cars, catapulting and control line model. All this served the single task, improvement of the winging ground machine. The team was basically ready to perform a serious task. A governmental resolution issued in 1963 assigned the team to produce assault transport and missile wing in ground machines. Their dimensions were supposed to exceed all previous Alexeyev's projects. Therefore, the prototype sample had the same size as the future combat vessel. It was the KM winging ground machine. The giant was 100 meters long and had a wingspan of 38 meters. The fin was at the height of a seven-story building. Until the Maria heavy cargo airplane appeared in the end of the 80s, KM was the largest aircraft in the world. KM's peculiarity was that with the dimensions of a vessel, its performance was that of an aircraft. It was built by specialists of the Gorky aircraft plant. The bottom was made of the shipbuilding alloys, while the top was shaped of the aircraft metals. This winging ground machine had no match in the whole world and its construction was unique. The Gorky Reservoir was too small for tests, so KM was relocated to the Caspian Sea. By the way, KM meant simply a ship mock-up. But in the West, it was called the Caspian Monster. It was easier to make taxpayers believe in the necessity of an antidote against such monsters. To be frank, the Caspian Monster perfectly matched its name impression grew when the monster started moving. The roar of 10 jet engines with a thrust of 10 tons each created fear and respect. Eight boosters were placed on the front pylon while two cruise engines were mounted on the fin. The crew of the first flight consisted of 31 people. Rostislav Alexeyev was at the wheel. There was an order in the ministry prohibiting top managers to pilot prototypes. First, there were gliding flights, and then flights with the use of the wing in ground effect. After a series of tests, it became clear that the body's strength made according to the aircraft norms was insufficient. The body had to be reinforced, and it took a long time. But still, the machine proved to be phenomenal. It flew stable at a height of 4 meters with a speed of 400 kilometers per hour. Those who witnessed the flight were absolutely fascinated and proud. With a roar and sprays at start, the flight itself was calm and gallant. If the machine was lifting up, it was enough to reduce acceleration and the vessel would smoothly return to surface. It was the landing that was not at all smooth. It resembled a fast ride in a farm wagon over a cobbled pavement. 
In general, the KM tests showed that the wing and ground machines of such a size could fly, and fly excellent. However, due to the topic uniqueness, there were a lot of problems needed to be resolved. Therefore, together with KM, a number of minor flying stands were built. The SM-5 machine was a one-to-four scale model of the monster. It went on tests, but a year later, there was a catastrophe. Having lifted off too high, the machine lost the wing in ground defect and crushed. It was the first heavy accident with a wing in ground machines. Though it did not stop the works. Instead of the lost machine, there appeared a new SMH sample. It was aimed at the KM testing methodology development. At the same time, SM-6 was used for the Arlionok winging ground assault vessel development. Arlionok was ordered by the Navy in 1968. The customer's special requirement was to improve the vessel's seaworthiness and amphibiousness. High sea and the striking impact over the body required to reinforce the bottom accordingly. A ski shock absorber was installed to reduce such impact. To let the vessel moving on ground, it was equipped with the wheel landing gear. Arlionok entered tests in 1972. It was smaller than the Caspian Monster, but its payload was 20 tons, which was equal to 200 fully armed soldiers. An assault force could be delivered within a range of 1,400 kilometers at a speed of 400 kilometers per hour. When the vessel was reaching the shore, grounding was performed through the tilting front side. Arlionok's boosters had variable angle nozzles. At the air feed, the jet flow would go under the wing. After liftoff, the flow would be directed above the wing, creating huge exhaustion and high lift. No special engines were made for the wing in ground machines. Instead, duly improved aircraft engines were used protected from sea salt, which was covering all elements and reducing efficiency. Air intakes were specially designed to prevent water from getting into the booster engine. The cruise engine was put on top of the fin, high above the water surface. It was a super powerful NK-12 turboprop engine with coaxial propellers. It was normally used on strategic bombers and heavy transport aircraft. But not only this made the winging ground machine similar to airplanes. It could fly going way beyond the wing in ground effect. So it was not just a wing in ground machine, but a wing in ground airplane. Since Arlionok was planned to be put on service, the problem of crew training emerged. It was not clear who will operate the vessel, sailors or pilots. The problem was resolved by Ivan Barzov, the naval aviation commander. After he was shown how the wing in ground machine flies, he said, it's a pure low altitude flight. The pilots will do it. Arlionok was the only Soviet military wing in ground machine put into production. The program enjoyed great support of the defense minister Dmitry Ustinov. 
At first, the state program assumed construction of 100 machines. Then the number machines. went down to 24. But even such plan was doomed to fail. A total of only five machines was built. They formed an air group directly subordinated to the headquarters of the naval aviation. The Soviet Navy flag was raised on the first combat wing in ground machine. The government also assigned Rostislav Alexeyev to build a missile winging ground machine. The new vessel was called the Loon. It was a unique missile carrying winging ground vessel. In fact, it served as a high speed launch pad for the Mosquito supersonic anti ship missiles. Missile containers were placed right on the vessel's back. The loon's weight of fire was similar to that of a missile cruiser, but it was 10 times superior in speed. It was low observable and maneuverable. Besides, its construction cost was significantly lower than that of a cruiser. The vessel's dimensions allowed it to take off at seas of up to five points. The Loon's layout repeated that of the Caspian Monster, but was a bit smaller. It was floated out in 1987, and three years later, its trial operation started. Loon was tested as a rescue vessel. Its floating wing served this purpose best of all. The Loon's second copy was started but not finished due to the Soviet Union's collapse. Interesting enough, but only USSR had these exotic machines. In absence of any complete and reliable information of the Arlyonik and Loon programs, Western specialists regarded the threat coming from the Tusum as very serious. For Europe in the first place. Indeed, it was very difficult to intercept such a fast vessel. Flying above the water surface, it was invisible for radars. Hydroacoustics could not hear it. Neither mines could stop it. while its range allowed to deliver an assault force to any European shore. By that time, the Soviet military strength reached its maximum. It was a huge and well-equipped army, with thousands of aircraft of all types and purposes, hundreds of ships and powerful submarines, tanks and artillery units, wide-range missiles, and nuclear weapon. Combat wing in ground machines made a good part of the military potential of this country. What was interesting, the better part of the population either way participated in the creation of this military might, but it knew nothing of the numerous and sometimes enormous project. The reason was the notorious secrecy. Here is an illustrative example. A brochure was published in 1983 called The Flying Ships. It was describing the air-cushioned ships and wing and ground vessels showing pictures of foreign samples. 
The brochure mentioned USSR having such vessels, but of minor size, made by students. Not a word of the Caspian monster, Arlenok or Loon. A series of events in the beginning of the 80s produced a negative impact on the future of the wing and ground machines. Rostislav Alexeyev died in February 1980. The Caspian monster built in a single copy crashed the same year. The pilot operating it after a long interval made several fatal mistakes, which led to the catastrophe. Everyone who knew the vessel were confident that something supernatural had to be performed for the catastrophe to happen. However, it did happen. Several years thereafter, Defense Minister Dmitry Ustinov, the godfather of the wing in ground topic, died. In 1991, the country that gave birth to the unusual machines collapsed. In 1992, one of the Arlenoks crashed. A year later, the whole type of these vessels was removed from operation. Neglected in an instant, the remaining machines calmly lived their last years in the Caspese base. <laughs> 